First time going live. All right, so let's get this going. My name is Soros General. We're going to be going over credit. I'm trying to get you to understand how easy credit is, how you could use credit to, you know, improve your life and things of that nature. So I put together a whole PowerPoint presentation. So I want to go over the presentation. And if you have any questions, you could post your questions or you could send me a DM with your questions. I also have a website that could probably answer most of your questions where we post blogs weekly to help you when it comes to your credit repair and some things you may have not known about credit. All right, so let's get straight into it. We're going to do this presentation on understanding credit and how to repair it. So some of the things we're going to go over is um, the fundamental of credit. We're going to be accessing your credit health. We're going to be talking about strategies for your credit repair, how to build and maintain uh, good credit, and how to navigate some of the credit repair challenges. Right? So in a nutshell, we're going to define credit. So what is credit? By definition, credit is the financial agreement where you borrow money as credit and agree to pay it back to the lender in the future, often with interest. Meaning if you apply for a credit card from Capital One or from a bank like Chase or something like that, they're going to extend you, depending on what your credit is looking like, they're going to extend you some credit, maybe $300, $500, something like that. So, and you will use that to purchase or to make purchases, and then you have to pay that back on top of interest. So some of the type of credits that's out there is um, you have revolving credit, you have credit cards like installment loans, mortgages, open lines of credit like utility bills and cable bills, stuff like that. So under the, understanding these types of different factors of credit will help you understand how to keep and maintain your credit or even boost your credit score. So credit score is a numerical representation of your credit worthiness, meaning that you have a credit score that starts at 350. So everybody who just start out, their credit score starts at 350. So the scale goes from 350 to 850. So the more you apply for credit and get approved for credit, that the higher that score goes. So Anywhere from 350 to 850, you have 550 points to gain to get up to that maximum score. So if you have a low credit score, in order to boost that credit score, you have to first understand what's actually damaging your credit score. So how does credit work? There's a lending process. When you apply for credit, lenders evaluate your credit history to decide whether or not they're going to extend credit to you. So if you have no credit, that's not bad credit. That just means you don't have a credit history. If you have bad credit, meaning you have you know, late payments, um, you know, open collections, charge offs, judgments, liens, things like that. You have negative items that's bringing down your credit score. They also have interest rates and fees. So the lower your credit score, the higher interest. So it's important to have at least, you know, maintain your responsibility. I know it's hard and it get tough out there at times, you know, but sometimes we just have to learn how to manage the things we have in our life right now not not what we're trying to plan to do in the future but what we have right now because sometimes we overspend even i still overspend in certain times like that and i beat myself up but i have to always get back on track look at the budget because i may have forgot something that month and then just realign yourself so they also have credit agreements meaning when they grant you credit you enter a legal agreement to pay back any money that you borrow so you get approved for credit you use it you then now have to pay that money back. You are legally obligated to pay that money back because somebody extended some money to you. So it wouldn't be fair not to pay them back if you're going to be borrowing this money and spending it for yourself. So now you have your credit reports. And some things you need to understand on your credit reports is a detailed history of your credit history. It has all of your accounts, your payment histories. It has your debts. And it also has your addresses. It has your name. It has all your information, maybe the jobs that you had. Uh, work for things like that. So if you're trying to improve your credit, you want to make sure you have at least the first step is one address. Or if you've been in this address two years or less, maybe that address and the address before, because most of the credit that you possibly would have gotten could be tied to old addresses. So any old addresses you have less than two years, get that up out of there. So you want to access your report to see exactly what's going on on your credit report. So you can see what's damaging it. You can see if you have, uh, you know, you made a payment, but now they're reporting that you're late. So you want to challenge that. You want to correct that. You don't want to delete it. You want to challenge it. Say, hey, I was 
uh, on time. And that's all you got to say. You don't have to say nothing else. You just give them exactly what they need in your letter and they will correct. And if they don't correct it, then there's another challenge you could do after that. So some of the impacts of your credit could be your credit history. So anything less than will correct. And if they don't correct it, then there's another challenge you could do after that. So some of the impacts of your credit could be your credit history. So anything less than will correct. And if they don't correct it, then there's another challenge you could do after that. So some of the impacts of your credit could be your credit history. So anything less than two years is kind of just still starting out. It's still starting out. So you have like, it can be um, some of your loan eligibility, right? So if you have, like I said, uh, late payments, charge offs and things like that, those are negative items that, that could bring your score down and make it not, make it look like you're not credit worthy or irresponsible, which you don't have to be irresponsible. It just means that things happen. So we have some consumer reporting agencies, right? All right. So we have some consumer report agencies. We have Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. We should know who these three guys are. We also have CoreLogix and LexisNexis. These are the data furnishing companies that actually produce the debt, all of our information to everyone else. So Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, we usually look to CoreLogix and LexisNexis for information on us. So the differences between these credit bureaus is uh, they're all different companies. They don't work together. They're all individual, independent entities, and they all have individual information on you. So that's why it's important for you to know what's on credit report. If you have a credit card, one credit card, and only one uh, consumer report agency is reporting on that credit card, you need to update that on the other ones. You may have a 600 credit score, 500 credit score, and a 550 credit score because these two is not reporting your good history that you have on this one. So everybody needs to have the same information across the board. That's when it comes to disputing and challenging. So if something is incorrect, you just you need to challenge it and make sure everyone is reporting the same information. That's that's as simple as it gets. Everybody just has to report the same information that you know your information is. So you could access your credit health. So understanding your credit score, right? Like I said before, the credit score, I think I said 350, but it ranges from 300 to 850. So if we do some math, right? That's 550 points you need. So it's like, how does it go? 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, right? So 35% is your late payments. And I don't have a calculator. Hold on. So 550, so right, 35%, right? So 550 points that you wouldn't get 850, right? So if you have a late payment at 35%, that's potentially 192 points. So let's say if you have a 700 credit score, and you got one late payment, that's 192 points you just dropped yourself. So if at the bare minimum, make the minimum payment on time, that's how important it is. So if you just do a little bit math between the 35, 30, 15, and 10, you'll understand how many points you have per category and how to play it. So some of the factors that could uh, affect your credit score, like I said, is the payment history, young payment history. Anything of two years shows that you at least been making some type of payments on whatever accounts that you have, credit cards, mortgage loans, uh, cards, stuff like that. Uh, to, so some of the ways you can improve it, number one, we like we all know, may at least make the minimum payment on time and then bring that utilization less than 30. Um, a lot of I see a lot of people get confused when it comes to like um, um, due date and payment date. What you need to understand is whatever your due date is, pay it on that due date. Think of the statement date as an extension to try. It, think of the think of the, the the statement date as an extension for you to bring your balance as low as possible. If you can't, then that's fine. Try it for the next month. But that statement date is when they're they're going to report whatever that balance is to the credit bureau. That's why they try to play the game between uh, due date, statement date. So, you know, you can play the game too. $25 minimum payment, make sure you make that. And then by the statement date, if you got another, whatever that is, $100, $150, whatever you need, 
try to do that. If it's 75, it's 75, whatever it is. But you just try to bring it down as much as you can and then improve the next month. That's all you got to do. Don't kill yourself. So how you can analyze your credit report, you got to review for accuracy. Make sure your name is correct. Make sure you have at least one address. If you did two years, make sure these accounts that's reporting, make sure it's accurate. Make sure the date, make sure their name, make sure the account number, uh, the date you opened it, your balance. You want to make sure all of these things are correct, right? So you want to identify the red flags. And if it's not, you challenge it. You just write a simple letter. Let's say if like the, the date is off, you just write a simple letter. Just tell them, hey, the date is off. I'm, I'm going to give you an example, right? It is a simple letter. It is my understanding that my information needs to be accurate across the credit bureaus. So I found some information on my credit report that I reviewed that there's some information that is inaccurate. To my understanding, like I said, my information needs to be correct. Whatever that X is, late payment, uh, charge off, whatever that is, you just block that in and say, I challenge this. Done. You don't have to get all crazy with the verbiage and all lawyery and nothing like this. Just explain it simply because you want to let them know a human is actually writing this. You don't have, as a human, you don't have, you know, uh, I'm not going to even say as a human, but let's say as a, a person with no person that has no knowledge to repair credit. So you just explain it in plain English what the problem is. And that's pretty much it. And all you have to do. So some of the common, like I said before, with errors is personal information. You know, my name is Anthony T. Richardson, right? They'll probably have Anthony Richardson, Anthony T. Richardson, Anthony Richardson T. Richardson T. Anthony. And that's probably how you fill out the application. Like when I went to the military, they always told me to use my middle initial. So every application I fill out, I fill out first name, middle initial, last name. So whatever you fill out or however you define your name, if it's first name, last name, only put that. If it's first name, middle initial, last name, then put that. That's why you have all these discrepancies on your credit report. So however you define your name, you want to make sure that is on your credit report across all the three bureaus. And then also the address. And then, you know, just make sure these accounts is correct. So the dispute process usually take anywhere between, you know, I would say 15 to 45 days. They answer usually TransUnion answer anywhere between three weeks to four weeks, as long as you only send one letter at a time every three to four weeks. And then they don't, ha they don't have to come back and challenge and say, hey, I need 15 more days, make it 45 days. So you want to send one letter every 30 days or one letter when you receive, you know, when you receive whatever you get back, then you want to send out your next letter if you have to. So how you can prevent errors? Simple, you know, the, the common denominators, you know, we got to try to just, you know, I'm going to tell you what I do. Sometimes I overdrive just to pay the bills or, or to keep my credit straight. So I keep, and that's not even like good to say, but you know, sometimes bad things happen and then you just got to keep, you know, you got to work at it to fix it, man. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's perfect and nobody, not everybody has a whole bunch of money, but we all strive to do so. And we all strive to be better. So if you just keep making those small steps and understand and learn the process each and every step of the way, instead of freestyling your life, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So on time payments definitely is a is a huge positive impact. Like I said, it's 192 points, and I think 30 percent is like 160 points or some shit like that. So, something like that. So that's like almost 400 points, like 350 points between just those two categories. So you don't want to be playing around with those two categories. And then you got your credit history and your credit link. So those those are minute. Those are like 15 percent, like just like inquiries. That's like 10 percent. They might new 55, 90 points. It still hurts regardless. If you got a 700 credit score and, you know, you get an inquiry, you may get approved for the for the uh, credit card or may not. Whatever. That's another story. You potentially, you could use like 20, 30 points off that, you know, but, you know, it'll bounce back after 30 to 60 days. So you got to recognize some of the problems that you have. Um, like, I can't stress this enough. Like, it's like repeating the same thing. You just got to you just got to look. It's not rocket science. We're not, you know, you know, engineers putting, you know, you know, complex letters with with information in it. That's just going to make these people actually this machine that we actually send in these letters to this machine, you know, validate whatever our claim is. No, it's not. It's real human problems with real human words. And they just explain to them, as you know, it what the problem is, identify it 
and send to them what the problem is. The thing that I think sometimes we, we mess up is, you know, people lie. So you have to send it out certified that that validates that, you know, somebody received it because somebody has to sign for that letter you sent. So if at least somebody received it, it's it's it, I don't like to say this, but it's safe to assume that they read it. So at least they received it. You could fight the case that, hey, listen, they got it. So they can't say they didn't. So if you want to just prioritize your issues when it comes to your credit, if you have a lot of inquiries, you can attack that. If you have open collections, you could attack that. So depending on what's, I would say, what's going to boost your credit score the most is what you want to attack first. And whatever's going to boost it the less, I would attack that last. But the first thing you want to, first thing you want to do is just make sure your personal information is correct. On address, however you say your name, do that first. And then go do your disputes. And if that doesn't work, because I know it's, it's, it's busypreneurs out there, you know what I mean? Like busy entrepreneurs. And then it's like, you know, people who just like, I don't want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather somebody else do it. I got a little bit of change or whatever. Then you can seek out professional help. You know, people like me or, you know, someone that you feel comfortable with and, you know, helping you out in your situation. So those are the three things. You, also, you can also get a lawyer. Ain't nothing wrong with going and getting a debt repair lawyer. That's like the... That's like the number one option. And, it, and it's not like they're a bunch of money. You can find them on YouTube and gather up some information and possibly call them and find out some things like that. That's possibly your best place to go. But, you know, people think lawyers are out of touch and out of reach, but they're really not. You know what I mean? Call them up. So when you find out you have some errors on your credit report, you want to gather up some documentation. Right. So this is how I would dispute it. Once I get my credit report and let's say I'm going with Equifax. I make sure I highlight Equifax and the dispute item I'm disputing. I'll highlight that dispute. I'll write my plain English, insert that dispute inside that letter I'm sending out to them. I'll attach a copy of that letter with the highlights, my letter, and I make sure I make copies of everything. I have a copy of my ID, a copy of my social security, and, uh, and uh, address verification. Excuse me. Make all copies of that, and I'll send that out or go to the post office and send that out certified mail. The other way I do it is with my credit repair letters where we could send it one click straight to them, straight through the internet. The only problem I had with, with TransUnion because they assume that, you know, they, they know, or I guess they know that it's coming from um, a source like a credit repair company. So what I do is just TransUnion, I just do TransUnion manually. And then the other two I do electronically. It pulls your information in using, um, uh, my score IQ so has uh, all of your reports and scores, calculation reports and scores, and there you can generate your letters. Boop, 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 dot, 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 send, done. All right, so that's how you can write a simple dispute letters, and you want to make sure you follow up and keep records too, keep copies. So when you send it out, you got your your certified mail. I used to put them in folders, so when they come out, or when rather when they respond, I'll put their response in the folder, rather if it's good or bad. And if I have to challenge it, I'll challenge it. But I'll keep everything in a folder because potentially we may want to go to, to court. And that's when you're going to need a lawyer. So some of the debt management plans you can have. So the obvious one uh, for me was creating the budget. It took me a very long time to stick to the budget, to build the discipline, like working out, to build the discipline to create the budget. But now that I've been on the budget for like two years, I see that you want to go harder like you was like, why didn't I do this before? Like what was stopping me from from actually saying that I don't need to do what I'm doing at this moment right now? So I guess it's just the life that we have and all the mindset. Really not sure, man. But creating a budget is something that you're going to have to do. That's the, the hardest thing to create. But once you create it, it becomes easy. So you want to also negotiate with your creditors. You can negotiate your interest rate. You could negotiate your payment date. You can negotiate, you know, if you've been late a few times, you could Put that to the back. There's plenty of things you can do. Like I said, just be a regular person because you're talking to human beings on the other side, especially if you call them trying to negotiate with them. So just tell them the situation um, and see what goes from there. A lot of times I like to just I like to do my thing in letters instead of talking over the phone. So if I'm actually speaking with a collection agency or, or creditor, I'll just tell them straight up, you know, I'll, de den I'll like deny the, the, the money. I'll deny the money. I'll verify who I am and where I live, but I act like I don't know nothing about the money and then tell them, hey, send that in, send that in writing. And then we'll get our dispute from there. Or some things, I, uh, one thing I don't recommend is like consolidation or refinancing. Um, there's always a plan. It, it just may take five years. It may even take seven to 10 years. However long it takes 
you know, it's just a plan. So we ain't, as long as we're not trying to go anywhere quickly, then just, just create the plan and see how long it takes. And if you can inject more money or find ways to get more money, then the plan years get shorter. So, you know, create the plan. And if you got, you know, you got God on you, then you don't, you shouldn't really be worrying anyway. So credit repair services, you could find credit repair companies. Like I said, also you want to avoid scams, right? You know, when people say they could, uh, 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 sweep your credit, clean, sweep your, nah, man, no, no you, you don't do that. If your identity has been stolen and then you report that to the police, then yes, then do a clean sweep. But if you're just trying to get some items, no, what do you, no, don't do that. Don't do that. That's going to even make it even, that's going to make it worse for you. So don't do that. That's one thing I would not recommend. I see that all the time. That's something that you should not even be doing. Just, it ain't microwave, man. It ain't. It ain't microwave. Sometimes you got to put it in the oven for 350 and just wait. Sometimes you just got to wait. And credit repair, you don't really have to pay nobody. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, you don't have to hire me. You could really just do this. You could really just, I was like, about the curse. Sorry. You could really just do this yourself. You know what I mean? Just learn how to just follow the process and keep good records. That's all you got to do. So responsible use for credit is smart borrowing. Smart borrowing is knowing like if you wanted to make a purchase, but also you have to have the money to decide. So like if you want to make a purchase, rather it be a car or something like that, you will know that you're going to have a certain amount of money that you would have at least cash to back up however many months you need to put you ahead. So if you want to extend yourself credit, $5,000, I would suggest to have at least half of that backed up in another savings account. So when you say spend too much. Now you have a way, if you don't have no forward money, you have a way to at least pay down your debt for six months and whatnot. So you want to make this automatic. So you want to be smart. You don't want to just be borrowing money because you want to just go buy stuff and whatnot. And just make sure you make your payments on time. That's, that's, that's number one. And a credit mix. So what a credit mix is, let's say you have um, a couple credit cards, three to five credit cards, Let's say on a low tier, anywhere between five hundred to three thousand dollars on a high tier, five thousand, twenty five thousand. You got uh, car loans, one or two cars, mortgage or not. Uh, you could have an installment loan because you want to do some home improvement or you um, just got a loan because you want a few dollars in your pocket, whatever the case may be. And they also have like um, what they call this, like secured loans. So say like they give you a thousand dollars, but you don't get the thousand dollars. You pay twenty five, fifty dollars a month. And then after you pay the thousand dollars off, you get the thousand dollars. So that's like another way to get a loan. So a mix of credit will help you also boost your credit. Paying on time, 30 percent utilization or less or 10 percent, whatever. It just just less than 30 or the lower, the better. Just know that credit mix in the age. If you got a, a long, especially a longer history, five years, 10 years, 20 years or more, you'll have seven, eight hundred credit score. People will love you. So some of the building tools. So if you want to build credit, you can build credit a few ways. How I started out was um, I started with Open Sky, Open Stock, Open Sky credit card. I started with three hundred dollars, and then I got to to three thousand dollars. Just still putting money on it, still using it active today because that's my secure one of the secure cards I use. Um, Capital One Spark card is what I started. Another one I started out with a business card that was three hundred dollars as well. That's up to eight thousand dollars after several years, not a short period of time. That was after like five years. You could also, once you start out with the secure cards, if you don't have no credit, if you can't apply for credit and get credit, once you start out with the secure cards, from there, you just use it responsibly, you know, buy small things, buy some socks or buy some groceries, buy, you know, spend small amounts of money, do that for six months, and then that'll help you boost your credit score. I mean, there's other ways. That's a whole other video well, the strategies that you can use, but that's just one way to do it. Um, like I spoke about earlier, the credit builder loans, you, somebody can give you $1,000, $1,500 and you just pay it back. And at the end, you get that back. Another thing I don't recommend, they do this a lot, is uh, being an authorized user. Like you could be an authorized user. Let's say, you know, somebody, you know, family member or something like that. They, ex they put you on one of their credit cards. Now, the company will send you a credit card. And now you have the obligation to or you have access 
to that money. They could determine how much you want to that you can spend per month, but now you have access to potentially all of that money to do really whatever you want, and it's not your responsibility to pay it back. So if you want to be an authorized user on somebody that's using that has good credit, just don't take the credit. Don't take the credit card. Just use the profile only. Use the history to help your history, but you don't need the credit card, especially if you're not responsible. So you may think you are, but you, you're not because I'm 46 years old and I've been irresponsible all my life. I, I'm just fixing it like yesterday. So some of the things I do is I monitor my credit. One of the, one of the services I have with the uh, Identity IQ is credit monitoring. So I'll know if, um, you know, somebody check my credit, you know, somebody check my history, somebody pull my report. I'll know um, if I didn't make a payment, which which I don't normally do. If I didn't make a payment, I'll you know get that text alert that you got a late payment. So whatever happens on my report, you know, identity theft, anything that happens within my name, I'm going to get the alert. Um, and also the credit monitoring service with the identity theft protection. So long term credit health. So you would need some financial planning. I'm not a financial planner, so I can't help you plan your future when it comes to money. I, I can tell you how to get to the bag. I can tell you how to get some credit and use it to get more credit, but I can't plan your future out. You would either have to speak to a certified financial planner or just build enough, build enough resources and then just start trying shit, really. Start trying stuff and then figuring it out from there. Definitely, you want to continue your education. That's what I do. All I do is just, you know, watch videos, read books, and, you know, try to get as much information as I can. I think I spent a better half of my life, you know, BSing and whatnot. So now, you know, it's time to rubber band it back, snapping and get back together. So you got to adapt if, you know, BSing and whatnot. So now, you know, it's time to rubber band it back, snapping and get back together. So you got to adapt with the same mind that created it. That shit just blew my shit up. It blew my mind. I'm sorry. So that is all I have for you today. My name is Taurus the General. I hope you're following. If you're not, I appreciate it if you do. And if you have any questions, leave that in the comments. I'll talk to y'all. Peace.